Hey folks, it's Dustin, your favorite Unity developer, back with another development vlog for Starship Command Orion Spur. We've been hard at work on optimizing for as many machines as possible in the last few weeks. I have seen the rising hardware costs in the last six months. I'm sure everybody has. If you want to build a computer right now, it's basically out of reach unless you already have memory but gpu prices and ram prices are going through the roof and uh, things are expected to get worse and expand to other components uh, now when we started this project two three years ago hardware was plentiful you could get whatever you wanted at least in the mid-range for a reasonable price and even if you wanted to buy a pre-built uh, those were pretty accessible as well but now um, things have gotten really out of reach so obviously optimization has been one of our goals from the beginning however when hardware is plentiful and there's plenty of memory to go around there's less of a focus and i would say maybe that's a bad thing right uh it's being spoiled obviously but as i've watched the market become more and more strangled by the memory shortage i started to think well what can we do uh, on our side to try and, and help uh, and one of those things was to just dedicate more time to optimization. You know, we listed our initial hardware requirements on Steam, and we got some feedback that it was excessive. So, uh, never wanted to shy away from a challenge. I uh, decided to take a deep dive and see where I could shave off more milliseconds from the frame time and from the VRAM requirements and overall system load. So what we have here today is a battery of tests I've run on four different machines to try and showcase exactly what this is now capable of and on what hardware. So on the docket are four different computers. One of them is a Windows 10 machine with an i5 and a single 2080 Ti. Okay, now this has uh, 16 gigabytes of system RAM, so that's a, uh, you know, low system RAM, you know, old i5 CPU, but with a strong GPU. And what I noticed uh, on this machine is that it was uh, highly performant in basically every circumstance, so the GPU plays a big role, right? Another one of my machines that runs Fedora Linux with a Ryzen 5 5600, 32 gigabytes of system memory, and the Intel Arc B580, which you can still get for a reasonable price now. Last time I looked, it was maybe 280, 300, something like that. Uh, I just saw it at Micro Center for 300. Those are mid-range GPUs. That was an exceptionally good experience on that one. I have a third system, it is a uh, Linux machine running an i5 and a 1080 with uh, 16 gigabytes of system memory. So again, limited on system memory, weak CPU, you know, old GPU. That system ran okay, we have footage of that. And then finally, as a challenge to myself, um, I wondered what the absolute limit was on what we could pull off. And I have an older machine here. It's a DDR3 system with a very old i5, uh, 24 gigabytes of system memory, and two GTX 680s in SLI. Now this was a serious challenge because there are only uh, two gigabytes of VRAM on a 680, and even in SLI you, you have to uh, share, you don't get to pool the memory together, so it's, it's still just two gigabytes because everything has to be copied to both cards. Surprisingly, the game actually does run. Uh, the interior is a struggle, um, so we want to try to work on that some more. A, a lot of the interior is very intense lighting calculations, and so I have I have some work to do there. But in the exterior, I was surprised because um, the 680s are actually able to keep up, and, and it becomes a CPU bound with more ships in the scene. But I was getting, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30 frames a second. Now, is that great? Is that an experience that you want? No, but I think the point of that is that it ran. And it was able to fit everything it needed to into that two gigabytes of VRAM, and it shows that it is possible. So if you have low-end hardware, you know, get in the Discord and tell me what it is. You know, I'm willing to work to try to get things to 
fit as best they can. Now, I don't think anybody out there is really running 680s, but someone could definitely be running a 980, a 1080, right? A 1650, you know, or just be on the lower end of hardware. And so we don't want to ignore those people. Um, it's our responsibility as developers to provide the maximum accessibility for our game because we want everybody to enjoy it, right? And not be worried about hardware and, oh my God, I got to upgrade my computer. You know, uh, it goes back to the whole thing on Randy Pitcher, right? Oh, this is a premium game and, and you need to upgrade your hardware right way. We've heard that from Todd Howard, and it's nonsense. Uh, frankly, it's bullshit. You should not have to spend exorbitant amounts of money just to be able to play a game. Uh, are you going to play this at the highest settings on very low-end hardware? Absolutely not. Those 680s were only able to handle this game at 720p on the lowest settings, but it did run, and that's my point. Some of the things that we did along the way here were optimize occlusion culling to cut out geometry on the interior that's not visible. When it comes to texture memory, there were a lot of small tweaks that had to be made. When we processed our characters in, they're from Realusion's Character Creator 4. Now, if you just take a set of models from CC4 and you drop them into your project, they will work, but they're highly unoptimized, even when you export them as quote-unquote game-ready. This has been a huge pet peeve of mine in the last month or so trying to work with this because I've realized just how inefficient their export pipeline is. But I had to take all of those textures that come out of Character Creator 4 and find where the duplications are because many of them were duplicated. You know, every single character's got the same ambient occlusion map for their face or they've got the same PBR maps for eyes and things like that or maybe they have a shared uniform texture right and, and if you just leave it as it came in from the exporter all of that will be duplicated in memory obviously that's wasteful so it was a very tedious process of stepping through all 18 or whatever character models we have and uh, having them all share textures and more importantly share materials where necessary so if you know anything about game development you know you have materials for objects that uh, run the shader program and if you can have an object share a material uh, then that's less stuff that has to be in a GPU cache that was it very tedious process because each one of these character models is pretty complex. You know, it's got a skin, got hair, eyes, uniform, textures, boots, all this stuff. Stepping through there and finding optimization was tedious, but worth it because at the end we got, at least on my development workstation, a 3 to 4x improvement on interior performance. Beyond that, I had to write a couple of custom shaders for skin because the Realusion shaders that are included, this goes back to why it's not really game ready, quote unquote, that they say it is. Uh, the shaders that they provide you are high quality but they are inefficient and they cause a lot of variant explosion in the build and that was actually killing our iteration time because it would take 18 hours to uh, put out a build because it would have to calculate all these shader variants and if I would make a change or switch platforms right it would dump all that and then have to recalculate everything and even on a you know we're talking about a 16 thread 7800 x3d on my workstation it's nothing fancy but that created a huge problem. I, I can't wait 18 to 24 hours for a build to come out. So I wrote a different shader. I wrote shaders actually plural for all of the Realusion shaders to replace them because they all had this issue. So that brought our iteration time down to maybe 30 minutes for a build, right? So I can actually iterate on issues. Uh, and then beyond that, when it comes to ships and other geometry, we have been following the standard URP pipeline for a while where the default shader allows you to plug in a color map, a normal map, an AO map, a metallic map, and an emissive map, okay? Now, uh, that's a lot of textures in memory for one object. So I took the time to go ahead and channel pack. You can take the metallic map, the AO map, and the roughness map for uh, shininess and pack them into one texture where each of those maps is on a different channel, though, red, green, and blue because they're all grayscale data. So you, if you put them in different channels, then you only have one texture in memory. And then instead of sampling three different textures, you only sample one. So it's, it's a double benefit. So in the shader, the shader only has to load and sample one texture. It gets all three channels and then you feed those channels into the shader calculations. That was a massive uplift because I'm able to do that with all of the interior geometry and all of the ships. Okay, so I wrote a custom shader for that to be able to do that um, channel packing and handling and reworked our interior geometry to use that as well as the ships. In addition, there were lots of little things that I messed up because, uh, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm one guy. I, we're a team of four with only one software developer, and that's me. Uh, you know, Mr. Gibbs is the project manager. You know, as, as much as we love him, he can't directly help us with art or programming. And then uh, Brian and Nick's 
are both artists, so as much as they might want to help, they can't dive into code or graphics programming. So, at the end of the day, everybody is twiddling their thumbs waiting on me to get this thing working. No pressure. But, I made several mistakes along the way, like, I didn't compress the skybox texture, so that was taking up a whole gigabyte of video memory. Change the compression on that and modify how that's imported, and now it's down to 350. Right, so we can work that out. And we want the skybox, right? That sounds like a lot, but we want the skybox to be super high quality because it's always visible. It's probably the most visible thing uh, if you're in the exterior, right? So different little things like that where there were just wasteful items, you know, different asset loads that are in the menu that should have been unloaded at runtime. Gosh, there's so many things I could name. It's like zapping flies, you know, there's one after another you can get. And we have a lot of work to go, but where the game is now, I'm very happy with and we're ready to move on to mission coding and uh, hopefully get this demo out the door very soon TM now some caveats we do still have bugs that are visible in this footage we do still have lighting issues in the interior because it's a it's a very complex interior environment and trying to light both a set of dynamic characters and static geometry in a way that's believable high quality and performant is difficult because if you know the old triad, good, cheap, and fast, only pick two, we're not able to make that decision. We have to take all three. It has to be good, it has to be cheap on VRAM, and it has to be fast on the system. So that means it takes a lot of work. And lighting is one of those things where if you mess it up, it's really obvious and it takes away from the experience. But if you get it right, then it looks great. So we're iterating. This is probably the fourth version of me deleting all the lights and redoing it to try and uh, squeeze more performance and believability out of it. We have some adjustments to make, of course, but uh, I think that we're on the right track. And again, that's why we're asking for money with a Kickstarter is because we have limited resources right now. But if we have the resources, we will be able to push this far beyond what we have generated so far. And I, I really believe that. If, if we can get um, good funding, we can bring on additional people, artists, graphics programmers, things like that to lessen my personal workload. And I can focus on gameplay while other more specialized developers take on things like lighting and shaders uh, rather than me having to do everything. I look forward to hearing everybody's comments on this. There is a question of like, should we show this right now in its current state um, because it's not perfect. I like transparency from anybody, especially if they're asking for money. And I would rather show what we have than try and hide or uh, mischaracterize or whatever. I think it's important to be transparent and show where we're at uh, and explain how we're going to get to where we want to be with the money that we're asking for. And if you look at our early videos versus what we have now, you can see the progression and the attention to community feedback. So even in the short span of time that we've been public with this project, I think everybody can see that we're committed to a quality product at a good price giving players what they want and listening to the feedback that we receive to keep tuning and making it better. We're, again, a team of four people basically working on this as a passion project. This is my dream. I, I feel like it's the rest of the guy's dream as well. I've wanted to be a game developer forever. That's not to say, oh, you know, please make my dream come true. Like, this is make a wish. You know, if you don't like the game, then say so. But we're in this all the way, and that's just what it is. And uh, as we draw nearer and nearer to the demo, I ask for patience and understanding as we crunch away uh, the hours to try to get this into your hands because I cannot wait for people to play this, but it also cannot be a total shit show when we give it to you. So I'm working as hard as I can to get it there. And I thank everyone for their support and their patience. If you're not subscribed already, please do. Uh, give us a like, a comment, a subscribe. We really have got to get the algorithm to spread us to more people because the, the biggest thing that's going to ensure our success is eyeballs. The more people we get, the more love we get because people seem to really want this project to succeed. Uh, so the more people we can get this in front of, the better. Thank you very much for your time. We'll see you next time.